power for living. Uh, the last uh, two sermons, both of us, the pastors, we've talked about the resurrected life, what the resurrection means to me. So I want to continue a bit on this uh, uh, conversation uh, from the scriptures. Uh, turn with me in Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. And we want to uh, talk, but just before we go to the scriptures, when you read the wonderful uh, letters to Paul, to the Romans, from Paul to the Romans, you will see that in chapter 7, before, it's, there's a struggling, a struggling, like we do what we don't want to do, and we don't do what we should be doing, and things like that. And you will notice that he, the, the, the old chapter use over abundantly I, 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 the pronoun I. Then when you turn to chapter 8, the I disappear and the Holy Spirit becomes the dominant figures of that. So that's the chapter that we want to, to look at this morning. Victory is not in ourselves, but it is with the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore no condemnation. Wow, what's a good news. For those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. And there is no condemnation. We can understand it in the two different ways. The first one, of course, there is no more divine condemnations about sin. It's been dealt with. I think this is very clear at the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But it also, and that's the aspect that I want to uh, de de develop a little bit more this morning, it also means there is no need for the kind of self-condemnation that you read about in chapter 7. Like, I cannot, I'm under sins, I cannot do the good things, you know. All this uh, self-condemnation described in chapter 7, the negative feelings that so many of us uh, struggle with so many years, and, and even after we are being Christians, the negative emotions, the guilt, the shame, the sense of uh, uh, failures and, and everything. There are too many negative emotions that we are struggling with. Too many people, too many Christians are struggling with negative in, uh, emotions. And these negative emotions, we need to realize why it, we should be victorious over that, because the influence the way we will live, the influence our decisions, the influence our outlook on life, the influence how we will relate to people, the influence how we will be free to obey the Lord and to serve the Lord because we are under these, the influence of these negative uh, influence. You know, uh, many of us, we still have fear. Uh, because we have fear, we will not stepping out in faith because we are under negative emotions. We have uh, experienced things that traumatized us in the past and we have now distrust to people. So we will have difficulties to believe the wonderful promises of God. We will have difficulties to relate to one another in marriage. All of these negative emotions will impact us in the way that we live because we of our upbringing. I, I see that all the time, and if you have ever done uh, premarital counseling with me, or you will do someday, you will hear me talk a lot about the upbringing, the, the consequence of our upbringing, the example of our parents, what we have seen from the family, what we have learned from the family, still remain the greatest, the greatest uh, source of... Uh, our behavior and our decisions and our relationship. And many times, unfortunately, it is negative again. Uh, also, experience that we, we may have experienced, for those of you who have been married a long time, uh, going through an affair, a divorce, or something like that, it will leave scars. And it will leave uh, the, this sense of distrust and everything and fear and, and all of this. So let us not be led by our negative emotions. And that is what this scripture is, is beginning to say. We don't have to continue living under the influence of these negative. The Holy Spirit has set us free from the law 
what kept us in, in this kind of uh, bondage has set us free in Christ Jesus from this law, this principle of sin and, and death. And the verse 2 explain why there is no condemnation. For the law, the spirit of life of, of Jesus has set us free. One of the main works of the Holy Spirit is to empower. In this, we don't insist enough. We don't talk enough about that. You who are in Christ Jesus have power. Amen. Yes, you have power. You're special. You are not ordinary anymore. You are not orphans. You are not left alone. You have divine power in you to enable you, to make you do you know, great things. The, the, the sky is the limit in terms of what God can do in your life. But because we are under all of these negative outlook of life, we cannot step in the full plan that God has for us. You know, the law of sin drags persons down to death. It paralyzes us. It, it brings us down, you know. It's like the law of gravity. Look at a bird. A bird is a wonderful example of this application. The air, the bird is heavier than the air that he uses to fly, okay? But when the bird pushes itself up in the air, it flies away. Okay, this is a wonderful picture of the law of life. The law of life in the bird overcomes the law of gravity. And the law of life and the Spirit of God helps us to overcome this law that keeps us down and, and fruitless and negatives in our lives. That's why many Christian songs have to do with birds. A bird says, I believe I can fly. <laughs> <laughs> I can soar like an eagle and all of this. You know? Romans 8 is a declaration of freedom. This is wonderful. We are not the same anymore. The past is over. We enter a new life with God. It's called the abundant life. We've talked about it in the Sermon on the Resurrection. Uh, next slide, Romans 8 and Romans uh, 8, 5 and 6. You will see two contrasting uh, expressions in this text. Those who live according to the flesh contrasted with those who live according to the spirit. Those who live, or, or if, if you want to be more like accurate on the Greek text, those who are after the flesh, or those who are after the spirit those who are after and this is so important and then in verse 6 you see a similar expression those who are carnally minded and spiritually minded and both of them have their consequences one as a negative consequence the other one as a positive consequence we all want the positive but we don't realize what we need to do to, to live the, uh, the positive life because we accept to be under the bondage that keeps us in the negative. You understand what I'm saying? We accept to be carnally minded. We continue to be carnally minded even though we have the Spirit of God inside of us and the, the full power of God in our lives. What's your mental inclination? What is the side? If you look at yourself in your own life honestly, are, are you carnally minded a little bit more? Do you tend to go on that way more than, the, than to do the things of the, of the spirit? Because to be carnally minded has the potential of death in it. It's like every day you are eating a little bit of poison. You're just poisoning your body a little bit like every day. That's to be carnally minded. It will just poison the great things, the freedom in Christ, the live that the the abundant, the more abundant life that Christ has. You just put some poison, so it takes it away. It reduces it, the the power of God into uh, your life. I want to refer to two points of my last uh, sermon. What the resurrection means to me. The point where I was talking about uh, Jesus Christ has come that we may live and have life and have it more abundantly. And this is the comments that I said at that time, and, and the, this applies to our context this morning. When disastrous event 
accident, tragedy happens, most people, all people actually, experience a range of negative emotions. We have lots of emotions inside of us. Emotions are our companions for life. We cannot live without it. Emotions are universals. The basic emotions, I was reading a lot of text this week on emotions and some of it. We have what the psychologists call the basic emotions uh, that are anger, fear, surprise, uh, disgust, uh, joy, sadness and we have these are the six basic emotions then you have what we call the the higher emotions or the moral emotions and in them you have uh, pride for achievement guilt uh, embarrassment and shame these are uh, s a summary of the main uh, emotions that we have and if someone hit you on the nose okay what will you experience? You will experience, uh, probably, if uh, your, your eyes will tear up, your body heat will increase, your face will go this way, you know, and uh, you will have also a strong desire to hit back or to shout, okay? This is anger, this is an emotion. But this emotion is international, it's universal. If you hit someone in Africa, or in America, or in Europe, or in Asia, they all have the same emotion. This is universal, this is part of our life. So, so when we, we experience disastrous event or tragedy and everything, we universally, human being, it's part of our being, experience negative emotions. Uh, and I said before that many of that I these emotions will lead us to a result, like to, to something. Years, many of time, will be year years wasted destroying our health by alcohol, drug addictions, depressions. You may end up, uh, you know, a bit depressions in the psychiatric unit. And these are works of the devil. The thief has come to steal, destroy, and everything. But I have come for another reason, and that's the one that you should be part of. Don't spend time with the devil, what he is doing to you because of these negative emotions that have left a mark and a source of influence, and then you end up being bound under the influence and the works of the enemy to wasting your years instead of being active in service and glorifying God, then you are being captives again and these, these things. People get stuck. They become prisoners of their emotion. And instead, Jesus says, I have come to give you life and life more abundant. And that's what you need. Amen? Amen. You know, that was weak a little bit, but you know, maybe it will increase with time. The Holy Spirit instead produces a, a life within a life. It's like you have two life. If, if your life doesn't have enough power, and it doesn't, we know that, we don't have power in ourselves, everything we try by ourselves, we fail. That is chapter 7 of Romans. I, I, I don't do what I should. I cannot do what I should. You know, this kind of thing. That's chapter 7. Chapter 8 is different. It's like his life in your life gives you the, his power over your power. And he, he helps us to turn these negative circumstances and you can work in you in such a way that the tragedies and the negative event can bring something beautiful in your life and in the life of others. You go through a drama, you come out in Christ, somebody else along the way and your families or your friends or your acquaintances, you meet them and because you have been victorious, you help them. So not only it blesses you, but it blesses others because you have grown into that. 
The second point of my last sermon was this uh, sense of uh, incompleteness. You know, like when we do things, we have done things, and we have made so many mistakes, and we have so many regrets of the, the past, and we wish to start over in all of this. But the Holy Spirit in our lives enable us to get back or redeem what we missed in life, what we did wrong in life, the, the years that was wasted and everything, the things, and it brings me to, uh, it brings the incompleteness of my life to completions. And this morning I want to bring it, these two to, to you. Do you struggle with feelings of like bitterness, regrets, fear, shame, deep hatred, because of your past? Are these emotions, some of these emotions, still alive in you and, you know, eating you up inside and everything? What happened? What is the result of living by the flesh in times of, to be carnally minded? In Romans 8, 5 and 8, 7, I think we have a slide on this, I think I added this one. Do we have it? Yes. It's the easy to read version. It says, people who live following their sinful selves, carnally minded, think only about what they want. And because of that, you cannot move forward. You cannot develop. You cannot enter into this full life that Christ has. Instead, you remain captives in spite of the fact that the Holy Spirit is in you. Because you are carnally minded. The Holy Spirit is there. He can, he can set you free. He can empower you. But you are not receiving it. You are not living by that. You are still, you know, in, 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 inclined to the, 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 the mind of the flesh and everything. There's an illustration about Queen Victoria, one of the greatest queen of England in the past that has marked history. Queen Victoria, when she was a child, uh, the, the instructors were very frustrated with her because no one could motivate her. And she was not attentive in school and her, she didn't take her studies seriously. Then finally, one of her teachers decided to tell her that one day she would become the Queen of England. And on that day, when she heard this, she said, then I will be good. <laughs> the realization that she had this high calling gave her a sense of responsibility that profoundly affected her conduct from then on. Isn't that great? That you and I, we must have this sense. You know, you are dead in sins and your trespasses. You are going to go to uh, eternal destructions. And then Christ saved you and gave you actually the highest calling that anybody can ever imagine. The power to set you free from your own condemnation and to embark on an adventure of faith that can impact the world, that can touch lives. You know, many great people have done great achievement in this world in terms of medicines, in terms of science, in terms of all this. You can be part of the greatest movement of transformation in this world by transforming the heart of people. You know, you, know yeah, you, you, you can discover something, but it doesn't change the spirituality. That's why when we do the medical mission, we put Jesus Christ first. We don't just bring medicine. If you bring medicine, you, you see a doctor. The person in that village is a poor person. We'll see the doctor. We'll receive for five days medicine. Is that all what the medical mission would be about? You give them five days? And the doctor listened to her, you know, a conversation for five to ten minutes and gave her for five days medicine. Is that all a medical mission should be? No. People have prayed. We have prayed for their healings of their body, divine healing. We have seen all sorts of things. People have bowed their heads, have received Jesus Christ. So if they die, they are going to heaven. The, there is the greatest calling and the greatest transformation power was at work into and, and and to that. Do you have that sense of high calling? If you don't, you, you are missing out. Listen to me this morning. This is very important. You are in Christ Jesus. 
You have the highest sense, you should have the highest sense of calling. Your life should count and make a difference. You are special. You have a role. God has a plan. You have a purpose. You exist for a reason. Okay? Those who set their minds on or after the Spirit, those who are after the Spirit set their minds on the things of the spirits. So where are you setting your minds? Because this will determine your effectiveness, the impact of your life, the fruitfulness, the satisfactions, the way that you live your life. We are not to be dominated or controlled or following our negative emotions and what it will bring in our, in our lives. If you consider your life, do you see yourself inclined more to be carnally or spiritually minded? Do you find that you are spending most of your time and energy to uh, satisfy your bodily inclinations? Ask yourself these questions because they are very, very important. And the verse 7 here, it says another result of being carnally minded. It says, you, can, you are hostile to God, you cannot accomplish God's will, and you are not even able to. So you can be religious as much as you want. You can go to a church uh, seven days a week if you want to. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to Christ. You're not going to heaven, and you are not going to get out of your trouble. But those who live according to the Spirit rise above these things and they are occupied in their new life. Are you occupied in your new life? Do you at least have personal devotion? Do you have that? Uh, I was recently with someone and uh, talking, uh, and my wife also told me a similar story. We are talking about somebody that we thought they are in the church they should know something about the Bible. It should be basic. And then when she was talking with someone, she realized the person did not even know the difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament. Person who is coming to church here in Lighthouse. <laughs> it's, it's very hard to, to understand. So if you are after the Spirit, you should be looking for, you should be busy in occupying yourself with the things of the Holy Spirit. Do you agree with me? Yeah. The Word of God, prayer, worship, Christian service. You know, we are free for Christian service. The reason why the Holy Spirit comes in us, why Jesus says, I will not leave you orphans, but I will give you another uh, powerful companion for your life. I will equip you. It's for a life of service. From the day you are born again to the day where you will die and go to heaven, you should be able to live a life for Christ. Your life should be the life that Christ will uh, be satisfied with. Choose the new way of the Spirit. I will give you a series of names here. And I will ask you, what do all these people have in common? S uh, King Saul, Ahitophel, I might not pronounce them properly, Abimelech, Shimai, and Goliath. What do these people have in common? Sorry? Pride, okay. <laughs> At one point or another, they all positioned themselves against David. They all tried to do something against David. They were against King David. David was a man well acquainted with enemies. As a king, enemies and betrayal was part of his territory. He, he knew about that. He writes about it. You, you read the Psalms, you read the story of his life. Enemies, enemies, betrayal, running away, trying to steal. Let's, let's read something in Psalm 55 about his emotions, how he felt. He's talking to God. Please listen and answer me, for I am overwhelmed by my troubles. 
Are you overwhelmed with your troubles? My heart pounds in my chest. The terror of death assaults me. Fear and trembling overwhelm me, and I can't stop shaking. I, I, do you have this kind of emotions? Oh, that I had wings like a dove, that I would fly away and rest, just escape, just run away from all of your responsibility, from the people that hurts you. I would fly far away to the quiet of the wilderness. How quickly I would escape far from this wild storm of hatred. That is how David felt. This is what these people do to him. There was a lot that David could have dwelt on with these people. He could have sought revenge. He could have killed King David in the cave, uh, King Saul in the cave. He could have sought revenge from his enemies. How this enemy had done this and how this traitor had done that. He could have planned a lot of things. But he reached a point when he realized that dwelling on the acts of others doesn't help you in the long run. He came to that point. And in Psalm 55, David shares with us what helped him to get past his enemies and all the fallout they brought with them. And these are summarized in a few words. As for me. All of these emotions are there, but as for me, I will call or I will go to the Lord I will lean upon the Lord, but as for me, I will call to God and the Lord will save me. There are some among you here today that have been wronged by enemies in your past. People that have hurt you. And you have to turn a corner when it comes to uh, what, they're think what you're thinking about, what you're going to do about it. You need an as for me moment in your life. And as for me experience when you decide to stop looking at what your enemies have done. How much you have hurt. And you will determine to fix your attention on the Lord. Focusing. We should not focus on our enemies. We should not focus on our enemies and what they have done to us. Because it will leave you drained out of your energy exhausted, paralyzed, hopeless. And what they have done, they have done. And you cannot change that, and you cannot control that. But what you can control is what you will do. Just like David, as for me. This is my attitude, this is my action. And if David was able to do this, so can you. And you will when you will allow the Holy Spirit to fill you and free you from focusing on what the enemies have done to you. But, as for me. Actually, the other Bible said, and I, even I, like the insistent, that's my decision. This is how I came to resolve this negative feeling, all these uh, uh, negative emotions to escape. You know, ignore, uh, you know, like become paralyzed and everything. He was a king. He had a mission to accomplish. He was the anointing of the world, of the Lord. So what if he would have stepped step out, run away, says, I don't want to be king anymore. You know, his story would not be the same thing. Jesus Christ came as a, as, as a descendant of King David, it was prophesied. So instead he had this as for me moment. And we need to have moments like this. Have you experienced this kind of emotion? Disappointment, anger, discouragement, sense of failures because of what people have done against you. Too many are paralyzed, are prisoners of their emotions through guilt, regret, resentment. And you cannot develop and you will be unable to serve God. You will miss out the abundant life that Jesus gave. And some churches, instead, they will practice what they will tell people who are struggling with negative emotion, which is, you, have, you are demon-possessed, you have to be, you know, you have curses on your life, we have to break the curse. No, that's not, for most cases, that's not what you need to do. What you need to do is stop being carnally minded. 
What you need to have is a as for me moment and the presence of God and to be set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. It says it very clearly, there is no more condemnation. There is no need for a sense of self-condemnation because the Holy Spirit has set us free and has equipped us with power for a full life uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 9. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit. If you have the Spirit living in you, you are controlled. That is the standards. This is the experience. If you are born again, you live in a different sphere. Just as a fish lives in water, and a man lives in the air, so the believer in Christ Jesus lives in the Spirit, and the Spirit lives in Him. This is, this is, and actually this scripture says, if the Spirit is not in you, then you are not even a Christian. Yeah, you, you are not be belonging to, to Christ. The Spirit live, gives you life for a reason, for service. All the days from today, until you will die and meet the Lord, you are free to serve the Lord. This is the greatest calling. This is the greatest thing that can happen to your life. You know, the excitement, the, 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 the productivity, the meaningfulness, the adventure. Think about the adventure of your faith, the things that you will see God do in your life, the thing that God can use you to accomplish His purpose in this life. There is no limit. There is no limit as far as you will believe God. All things are possible. That, these are the promises of God. If you believe it, you will experience it. But if you are carnally minded, you will miss the boat. You will miss the best and you will live another kind of life that, you know, you, you will drag yourself through life. You know, fruit, fruitless, you know, instead of, you know, being active in the Lord, living a life of service, a life that you are proud of, a life that pleases the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a, a series of, uh, like a quote here that I want to let you see before we, we close this morning. If a man is filled with anger. Okay, maybe we can read that together this morning. If a man is filled with anger, then anger controls his life. If a man is filled with greed, then greed dominates his life. If a man is filled with lust, then lust governs his life. If a man is filled with lust, then lust governs his life. If a man is filled with love, then love influences all he does. And if a man is filled with the Holy Spirit, he is controlled by the Spirit. It is, if you will, controlled by consent. And that is very important, the last part. If a man is filled with the Holy Spirit, he is controlled by the Spirit. Controlled by consent. It's, it's you. You want to be controlled by the Spirit. It's your choice. That's what it means. You want to be controlled. You want to be after the Spirit. Then you will seek after. You will be occupied with. You will discipline yourself. You will make choices in your life. You, you will bring the means of grace into, into the way that you live. You know, there's a difference between, apparently, a, a vulture and a hummingbird. You know, a hummingbird, the little... Birds is very colorful in all of this in the vultures. Both of them live in the same environment. The, they live uh, in wilderness. You know. The vultures, when they see rotted meat, they, that's what they, they look for. They thrive on the diet. But hummingbirds, they are not attracted with rotted meat. They look for colorful blossoms of flowers okay so the vultures live on what was and now is dead and it lives on the past something that is not alive anymore that's the vulture it lives in the past and it stays there the hummingbirds feed themselves with freshness and life and each bird find what it is looking for and we all do 
what do you look for is what you will get you want the spirit you want more the control of the spirit the fullness that the spirit the freedom of the spirit the fruitfulness that comes with the spirit the power of the spirit you can have it you can find it if you want to look in the past if you want to stay there, you can also have it, Bec or, or you will get it, because both, both, both exit. So the question in closing is that you may have the Spirit, but think for a moment at this, at this reflection. Does the Spirit have you? Is there a difference here? We have believed in Jesus Christ. We have access to the resources of the Holy Spirit. For sure, the Holy Spirit lives in us. But some of the Christians who have the Spirit have different uh, experiences. You realize that, eh? Some you can see the evidences of the Spirit-filled life. And some of them you can see only flesh. You, you see negative temperament, you see negative characteristic, you see a lot of negative complaining, uh, always unhappiness, you know, they, they, there's a lot of negative characteristic. But both people uh, believe in Jesus Christ. They may have been saved in the same service, you know, but the experience in the Lord is of the different nature. One has the fullness of the Spirit and the other one has not the fullness, the emptiness, or the, the nothingness of the Holy Spirit, or very little, okay? There's a difference. What do you want? Does the Holy Spirit have you? You have the Spirit, does the Holy Spirit have you? I want to challenge you this morning to get aboard what God has for you. The exciting life, the better way, the more abundant life, it's possible. It's possible. Do you believe it's possible this morning? Yes. Yes. I said, do you believe if it is possible? Yes. I said, do you believe that it is possible? Yes. I'm sorry, but on that side, are, do you believe that it is possible? Yes. Oh, it's not very loud, that side. <laughs> that side believe more than in that side. What about that side? Do you believe that it is possible? Oh, the middle part. Okay, let us stand together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.